Hello, welcome and thank you for being here uh, attending this presentation. In the next 20 minutes, I'm going to talk about the Classibility uh, Microprocessor Core family featuring uh, uh, multi threading hardware support and uh, uh, vector acceleration. Um, this work has been developed at Sapienza University of Rome, which is the largest university in Europe for a number of students, yet uh, the work has been contributed by a relatively small number of people. Uh, that are the members of the Digital System Laboratory at Sapienza University, uh, that I am glad, glad to be the leader of. So, we will go through, first of all, the uh, background application and the motivation that uh, led us uh, in the development of this work. Then we will describe the Placebra uh, uh, microarchitecture. Uh, talking about multi-threading uh, and uh, parameterized uh, vector acceleration schemes, uh, and also a few words about the software uh, layer uh, that composes the Placebo architecture. So, uh, we will discuss the performance evaluation uh, considering uh, a, a workload that is composed of convolutions, uh, matrix multiplication, pass Fourier transform, both in a homogeneous and composite uh, uh, way. We will discuss the results uh, in terms of uh, cycle count and uh, absolute execution time, uh, as well as uh, maximum clock frequency and the energy efficiency. And then we will uh, take our conclusions uh, by analyzing the results. So, uh, the target application context uh, is uh, IoT. And within IoT, uh, the extreme edge of the IoT hierarchy, the extreme edge devices. Uh, there is a uh, widely recognized uh, trend uh, on that, uh, that uh, is going to, to replace cloud computing with continuous computing, in which all the layers of uh, the uh, IoT uh, hierarchy contribute to data processing. Well, the uh, design challenges uh, that we have uh, to, to deal with when we want to design uh, uh, hardware devices for uh, uh, extreme edge computing are not uh, so different uh, qualitatively uh, from uh, what you can find in high performance computing. So we talk about uh, energy efficiency, uh, absolute performance, uh, and, uh, uh, and cost. But uh, what is different is uh, the numbers. The uh, local energy budget is very small here, and uh, the diversity of the uh, application routines uh, uh, makes it difficult to guarantee a, a, to, to guarantee the performance requirement uh, without impacting the cost. So uh, we believe that uh, there are two features that we can keep in mind uh, when developing hardware for. Uh, extreme edge devices. Um, the first one is the possibility of taking advantage of uh, the uh, inherent uh, um, multi threading nature of the application. For example, an intelligent camera that uh, is uh, uh, processing uh, multiple images uh, at the same time. And the second uh, thing is that uh, whatever you do with uh, uh, multi-threading, uh, instruction level parallelism, uh, when it comes to uh, support uh, artificial intelligence on the extreme edge, for example, uh, uh, it is not uh, possible uh, not to rely on hardware acceleration in order to, uh, to uh, reach the required uh, computation, uh, computing power. Sorry. Uh, so these are the two uh, directions that we followed uh, in our research. The research started uh, with uh, an educational uh, design, like many uh, research works uh, in the RISC-V community. We started by designing a, a microprocessor core uh, that was intentionally uh, designed to be compatible with uh, the Palpino uh, microcontroller platform. Uh, designed uh, at ETH Zurich. So we first started with this uh, uh, S0 core and, uh, and then soon introduced uh, the T0 core that 
uh, was the first to support the uh, hardware uh, level multi threading, internally multi threading. And then we took two directions one is uh, uh, going uh, towards fault tolerance for face application, and uh, the other one is what we are talking about, that is the uh, T1 uh, branch of uh, uh, this development uh, that supports uh, uh, interleaved multi-threading and also a parameterized uh, uh, vector acceleration uh, support, vector acceleration coprocessor, uh, targeting IoT applications. So this is the baseline T03 core that uh, is the basis for all subsequent developments in this work. Uh, as you see uh, from this picture, it uh, uh, very well resembles uh, uh, the classical uh, RISC uh, pipeline, except for having multiple program counters to support uh, multiple threads. In fact, we have a context switch at each uh, clock cycle. Uh, in this way, uh, we uh, cannot have any uh, pipeline hazard um, the, due to conflicts uh, or dependencies between instructions in the pipeline. And uh, thanks to this, we can get rid of any hardware uh, infrastructure dedicated to deal with uh, pipeline hazards, like uh, data dependencies, uh, branch uh, 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 misprediction, uh, pipeline flashing, and so on. Uh, notably, we have a replicated register file and a, a control status register unit in order to keep the uh, state of multiple threads. Talking about the T1 uh, version of the core, uh, here we introduce uh, the, um, the uh, vector acceleration support. As you can see here with respect to the previous picture, the main difference is that we split the execution stage into three units. One is the, let's say, normal, regular execution unit that takes care of the scalar uh, instructions. Uh, on the right side here, we have uh, the, um, uh, what is, that, that is the vector coprocessor, okay? The vector acceleration subsystem, composed of a multifunction uh, multi-purpose functional unit and uh, a, a scratch pad memory local storage. The load store unit here is uh, responsible for moving data from uh, the uh, main data memory uh, to the scratch pad memory and vice versa. We can take a look at the internal structure of the coprocessor, back of the coprocessor. You see here um, uh, in the processing part, uh, we have uh, uh, multiple functional units uh, which are heterogeneous, uh, uh, meaning that uh, they are dedicated separately to addition, multiplication, subtraction, shift, accumulation, and compare. At the bottom, you see the scratch pad memory subsystem. Uh, we chose to have a scratch pad memory. Uh, local storage uh, for vectors instead of a, a, a more traditional vector register file to have more flexibility uh, guaranteed to the programmer. Uh, what is more interesting uh, here is uh, uh, the presence of these parameters uh, uh, that you see indicated as F, D, M, and N here. D is uh, the degree of data level parallelism. It corresponds uh, to the number of lanes in a classical vector architecture. Uh, the number F is a, a factor that multiplies the number of the, the instances of the um, processing units. Uh, the number M uh, multiplies the instances of the scratch pad memories. Uh, and uh, note that the number D also corresponds uh, uh, to the internal banks uh, of the scratch pad numbers. By playing with these numbers, it is possible to configure the coprocessor at synthesis time uh, in order to execute uh, in uh, very different fashions. So we can, for example, uh, uh, configure the coprocessor to uh, execute in a single instruction, single data fashion, 
then it's not useless because it can still uh, rely on uh, the local storage of the specified memory instead of going to the data memory uh, external to the core. Um, we can configure uh, the coprocessor, the acceleration, as a pure uh, CMD uh, with uh, uh, two, four, or eight uh, operations per cycle. Um, or we may go for uh, what we call symmetric uh, MIMBY. In this uh, uh, configuration, you have uh, one um, coprocessor, one coprocessor instance for each thread running in the processor. Um, this can be also uh, associated to synced, meaning that you have one uh, coprocessor associated with each thread, and each coprocessor is internally executing the instruction, the vector operations, in a CMD fashion, fashion with the data level parallelism. Uh, the uh, last two configurations that we have explored, uh, we call them heterogeneous MIMP. In this uh, case, uh, we have uh, only one instance uh, of a coprocessor, but internally, as you saw uh, a few seconds ago, uh, the coprocessor has uh, uh, heterogeneous functional limits. Uh, those can be operated in parallel in this configuration uh, on different, uh, uh, to execute different instructions. So one, uh, uh, only one coprocessor, but in case of different operations, they can go in parallel inside one uh, uh, single coprocessor. And the coprocessor is shared uh, between the uh, different threads uh, in the processor. Okay, so just a few words about the uh, software uh, support. Uh, we implemented uh, a, uh, a, a in, sorry, instruction set extension uh, to the RISC-V standard instruction set to, uh, to implement the operations that are uh, supported by the coprocessor subsystem. Most of them are vector operations and they take uh, as uh, uh, they take uh, uh, addresses of the scratch pad memory address space uh, as uh, operands, as uh, arguments, sorry. So, uh, these uh, mm, uh, assembly instructions are mapped uh, uh, onto a very small library of uh, intrinsic functions, which are visible to the programmer as uh, C language uh, uh, functions. For example, in this uh, code that you see here, we have uh, this uh, uh, multiplication of a scalar by a vector, or this vector addition here. The piece of code that you see here implements uh, a, a, a whole uh, uh, b-dimensional um, convolution on a, on a matrix. And so you see that with a uh, compact uh, code, we can take advantage of uh, the coprocessor uh, support. Talking about the uh, benchmarks that uh, we used uh, to evaluate the performance of the different configurations of the uh, uh, acceleration subsystem, uh, we uh, address the bidimensional convolutions uh, with the 3 by 3 uh, element filter size, which is the uh, very widely adopted uh, uh, filter size in uh, uh, deep learning applications. And uh, with matrices going from uh, uh, 4x4 up to 32x32 elements. But we also made a, an additional analysis uh, targeting uh, larger than 3x3 filters. Uh, we also consider FFT and uh, matrix multiplications. Uh, both are used uh, in, in different applications in, in IoT, uh, for example, cryptography. Uh, and uh, um, interestingly, we uh, composed the uh, workload as a homogeneous uh, set of uh, uh, threads uh, running the same program uh, in, in multiple instances, uh, and uh, so different threads, or in a composite way, so having uh, hardware threads running uh, different uh, application programs. 
uh, in order to, uh, to study the impact of the interactions between different threads on the uh, uh, overall performance results. The results that we studied are the uh, uh, total cycle count uh, per part of the thread, the maximum clock frequency achievable uh, when we implement uh, the processor as a soft core on uh, FPGA, the resulting absolute execution time when we run at maximum frequency, and uh, the hardware resource uh, uh, utilization, and interestingly, the energy efficiency expressed as uh, the average energy per algorithmic operations. Algorithmic operations are uh, additions and, uh, and uh, multiplications that are uh, intrinsic to the algorithm. They, they don't uh, depend on the software implementation. So this is the uh, large view of the results that we obtained. Uh, we don't have the time to go through, but anyway, here you have the microarchitectures that we explored that are the different configurations of the Placidra T13 core, and we compared them uh, with the non-accelerated uh, baseline Placidra T03, and also with the uh, well-known risky and zero-risky core, uh, from uh, ETH Zurich. Uh, looking at the uh, maximum clock speed that we found, uh, you can see that uh, there is always a, a frequency advantage for all the classical configurations, except for very, very few cases, with respect to the uh, zero risky and risky cores. And this is thanks to the simplified hardware structure uh, that we can uh, rely on, uh, thanks to interleaved multi-threading uh, paradigm. Looking at, yes, here it is, looking at the uh, average cycle count per computation kernel, uh, you see that uh, uh, in the case of small matrix uh, convolutions, such as this column here and, uh, and uh, the FFT, which are, which are less easily vectorizable, we obtain uh, a, a reduction uh, with respect to the risky core of about uh, uh, a factor of two. We are more or less in, in these configurations here. Uh, when we go for large matrices uh, and uh, matrix multiplications, uh, the reduction in the uh, cycle count with respect, uh, again, to risky is uh, much larger, which is uh, uh, nine uh, times, uh, like here and here. It is interesting to look at the absolute execution time that uh, uh, you obtain when you know uh, both the maximum frequency and the uh, number of clock cycles. You see that uh, uh, we reach up to uh, 15 times, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 17 times actually, uh, the, um, uh, the execution time of the zero risk core that we take it as a reference, okay? Um, you see that the most best performing configurations are those that use a blended uh, uh, configuration of uh, MIMD and SIMD. And this is true for both the symmetric uh, MIMD and the heterogeneous MIMD here. It is interesting to look at the energy efficiency. Here we uh, consider the average uh, energy per algorithmic operation. We, again, we took the zero risky core as the reference. We could have chosen another one, but uh, uh, we, we use this uh, that is here. And so uh, you see that we get uh, a reduction of uh, around uh, 85% in the best cases, in the best configurations, which are, again, the uh, blend of MIMD and CMD uh, execution uh, uh, paradigm here. A quick look at the uh, larger convolution uh, 
filters, uh, what we see is that, um, as may be expected, uh, for larger uh, filter size, the vector acceleration is uh, more and more effective. So we, we can reach up to uh, 35 times the uh, speed up uh, uh, over the zero risk reference score. As a result, we can come to our conclusions. So first of all, the interesting thing is that uh, by tuning the triad level parallelism and data level parallelism, uh, Mindy and Cindy, in a proper way, uh, we can reach the best results uh, on uh, more than 15 times uh, uh, absolute time speed up and minus 85% uh, energy saving per operation. Uh, this is less evident in those uh, computation kernels that cannot be easily uh, vectorizable, like uh, FFT, for example, in our cases. But again, uh, we, we can still reach uh, uh, two times or uh, up to three times speed up. Interestingly, uh, the fully symmetric uh, uh, and the heterogeneous mean schemes uh, give very similar results. This goes in favor of the heterogeneous uh, microarchitecture because uh, it has only one instance of the coprocessor, but it uh, shares the internal functional units. And uh, so it is um, more efficient uh, for hardware uh, resources uh, utilization. Uh, having said this, we expected a, a more evident advantage in terms of uh, area saving. Uh, this is not so true because there are anyway overheads due to uh, uh, internal crossbars that are necessary to the heterogeneous uh, operations. Uh, Interestingly, a pure simply uh, data level parallelism after acceleration uh, is always uh, uh, less um, uh, less uh, uh, effective than uh, a, a balanced thread level parallelism together with data level parallelism that we can achieve by having multi-threading and uh, hardware acceleration in our uh, microarchitecture. And finally, even in the absence of uh, hardware acceleration, uh, we see that interleaved multi-threading, uh, thanks to the simplified hardware architecture, uh, my, uh, hardware is yes, uh, microarchitecture, um, always um, exhibits a better performance than uh, uh, single-thread cores, uh, thanks to the absence of uh, pipeline stalls and uh, especially thanks to a highest uh, clock frequency uh, that is reachable uh, from, uh, by the, by the uh, interleaved multi-thread course. So, uh, this uh, concludes my uh, presentation. Uh, thank you for your attention. I will be glad to answer any questions. Thank you.